Hi, it's Phil from Wargamer Online, and today we're going to be looking at building Hobby Zone's OM05S small bottle rack. Let's have a start by looking in the box. Just open this up, and everything's always packaged brilliantly with these guys. As you can see, we've got a small instruction leaflet, not a lot to it, just the parts, and a rough guide on how to put it together. Say a rough guide, it gives you a numbered uh, guide on what goes on in what order. Put that to one side. Just taking out the components, you see we've got two sections there that secure the bottles in place. I think a word of caution already actually, you do need to take note of the size of these bottles and the order that they're in, because the racks, the two of the bottom row are actually the same size, but the bottles are positioned in a different order, so you do need to watch out for that later. Next up is the rear panel. And this has got some recesses which help secure the base and the sides to keep everything square. There's the second large bottle rack and you'll note the difference in bottle position there and then the final top rack. In here we have the base which has all got everything drilled out ready for the magnets and the supports. And finally in the bottom of the box we've got the two sides as well as a support for the centre. Last but not least, four magnets. One of the great things about Hobby Zone is you can use these to change your layout and setup. A good place to start is by stacking the actual bottle racks and just making sure that the alignment is correct so they're each offset on each row. So really that this just indicates the bottom two rows for you to make sure you choose which one is the right rack so you offset each of the bottles. It's always good to dry fit some of these, I mean I've, off camera I've gone through all of these and made sure they fit well, but I've never really had any problems at all with his own range whatsoever. Right, what we're going to do is start by securing a couple of pieces first. So what I want to do is just give myself a little bit of masking tape at the end of each of these. The materials you're using for this is basically tape and wood glue, there isn't really a need for anything else in terms of fixing. So. You know, there's no need for screws, nails, tacks, etc, etc. If you use the masking tape just to hold everything into place, then that's, that should secure things sufficiently for it to glue. I'm actually using just a wood glue here, um, but again, any sort of solid PVA based wood glue is, is ideal for this really. You know, I'll do the bottom and the side just so I get both surfaces there. Grab hold of that overlap of masking tape and tuck it in. That's just a temporary one at the moment, so don't worry about if it's not absolutely squeezing it into place. Just damp cloth, wipe off the worst of the glue, move on to the next side. Okay, so after repeating it on that side, just a quick wipe down, you'll notice everything's done on the sides. I'm not too worried about whether they're 100% at 90 degrees or square or anything like that. As I said, those that first two bits of tape are just there to hold things in place while I get the main structure together and we'll be looking at how we tighten all the joints up later. A couple of bits of glue on this. I don't bother gluing either side of the tag on this one. It's only a vertical secure, so all the weight is going down in terms of bearing down on this, so it doesn't really need to be an incredibly strong joint. Next up, we need to position the bottle racks. Let's start with the largest one at the bottom first. Just a quick dry fit into place, make sure everything's okay. Yep, not bad at all. Let's get it out, get some glue on this. And I need to apply glue in three places with this, along the edge strips, so each side, to make sure I don't go too far in, and just a little bit for that central support. Now I'm going to slide it into place, but this is important, I'm kind of lifting the edge underneath my thumbs, as you can see. And the idea is I'm trying to keep the surfaces from meeting until the last second. That way the glue doesn't get squished completely out the side. So you can actually see I'm not wiping that much glue off there and that's from sliding it in at an angle. Now we need to secure it down. Start by placing some tape on it. Pinch it together, pull tight on the tape, snap it. Pinch it together, pull not quite as tight on the tape and paste it down. And it's the stretch of the paper tape, the masking tape, that actually creates the firm join. Repeat on the next side, tear a bit off so it's easier to maneuver, get a nice good firm bite on that top surface, 
Again, line everything up neatly, pinch it together, pull on the tape, press down on the bottom surface. I go slightly off camera there, so sorry about that, folks. Right, so that's two secure joins now, really tight. Just check the alignment, make sure you're happy with everything, move on to the next rep. We'll just show it one more time on this one, and then we'll skip ahead to the next step. Here you can see, applying the glue on the outside, keeping it within that 5mm thickness of the MDF. Keep down the edge, get it ready, slide it into place. Note that the bottles are offset from each other now. Keep the edges up so not too much glue squidges out. Push it into place, then press down. Check your alignment on everything. Wipe off the excess. Apply tape to the top. Nice and firm again, make sure that's going to hold. Line it up with your fingers, pinch it all together, pull down on the tape, stretch a bit into underneath and tear off. Go to the next side, a couple of inches, apply it down on the surface, pull down, secure, stretch it, tear off and fasten. Okay, before we do the final two layers, I want to get the backboard on. And the reason I want to do that is, is the backboard makes everything square. So before we get to the final two, we're going to secure the construction so far into this backboard and align them up with that slots. Really simple process. Get your masking tape ready, put a few strips on. And again, this is just to help me out when we actually apply it. So I'll do one on each side and a few along the bottom. Okay, once all the tape pieces are in place, flip it over and I'm going to apply the glue down the slots. I'm just going to make sure I run a piece all the way this. I want a continuous bead because I want to make sure I get a nice firm join on this. Run it all the way around the sides and the bottom and along the middle there. Next up, flip this over, push everything into place. And there's not too much on tape wise now so it will maneuver and it will position and then i'm grabbing hold of each piece of tape holding down firmly with my hand on the base stretching the tape as i apply it and again it's the stretch in the tape that gives you a good firm join nice and tight it should squidge some of the glue out as you do it and that's if you put enough glue on and all you need to do is go around with a damp cloth and wipe out the remaining glue or if you're lazy use your finger like that now we've got the main structure together, what I'm going to do is just apply some more tape to make it more rigid. So I really want this to pinch together now, so grabbing all, applying it on the opposite surface of the join, and then pulling tight. Oh, make sure it's adhered to the wood properly, otherwise that happened. Then slide it down. And again, what I'm trying to do each time is make sure that the tape is stretched lightly. It's probably a good point to mention, you can't really use um, masking tape that doesn't have any stretching in it. The best way to judge it is when you're buying it, if you go to the shop and you pinch the roll, if the roll feels spongy, that's the kind of masking tape with a bit of stretch into it. But if you pinch the roll and there's no give on the tape, then it's the wrong kind of masking tape for what you want because there won't be any stretch in it. Okay, just repeat and now with the sections, as you see I put glue on the side and the middle, got it into place. Of course this time when I'm applying the tape I'm stretching it as again all the way down to the bottom and pinching off the last two inches on the base of the unit. Again the stretch providing a nice strong joint. Finally we've got this top section. Slightly different to the other pieces not only do we need to glue the edge there is a small middle support which I actually glue the middle support rather than try and guess where the middle is. And then finally I'm going to run a bead of glue all the way down the back edge. Now you know I've not done these with the other ones and that's because they don't actually make contact with everything. But there is actually a slot on the backboard that receives this top one and makes it nice and firm. As you can see here I'm just making sure it's pressed into that joint. Now you've got to spend a bit of time wiping it down because this of course is all visible. You've got that nice clean white backboard. Well, clean for as long as it takes for you to spill paint all over them disastrous if that should ever happen. Two inches of uh, two two inches of the tape, but making sure that you've got it in position and you hold it firm, 
pinch it together, stretch the tape. Again, just you can see me just relocating it there, making sure the alignment's good. Pinch off the tape, quickly move to the other side because it's making it spring out. Look, that pressure is making it lever and spring out. So what I'm going to do is just do a small piece just to secure it first. And then once I check my emails, tape that down, hold it firm and in place. And then apply the long length of tape. And it's this one that's going to make the joints all bond together. So pinch it nice and tight, stretch the tape, pull over. You've seen this technique by now, and you get the idea. Last thing to do, a couple of extra pieces, push that backboard. You can see the stretch in the tape there. Secure the bottom. And really what I'm doing now is just checking around to see if there's anywhere else I'm going to do the opposite side of there. Pinch it off. And I think that's pretty much it for this. Oh, I decided to do one last bit at the top there. Of course, actually, that's a good idea because there's a slot um, which is uh, running all the way down the length of it. And I want to make sure that that bonds to that top piece. Once all that's in place, I leave it 24 hours to cure. I mean, most wood glues will dry faster than that, but I really want the bond to be firm, so I'm a, I'm a strong believer of letting wood uh, glue have the time to cure properly. Okay, put it to one side and everything will be fine. Of course, once it's all set, all you need to do is go around and remove the tape, apply the magnets, and um, it's ready to go and join the rest of the system. On my next video, I will talk about how I fit the magnets in place, so uh, check that one out. I'll be looking at a draw system for the next video. And um, thank you very much for tuning in. Hope you found that useful. Um, if you want to know more, don't forget to check out wargameronline.com. Thanks a lot. Bye.